Aloha, Dishku family of Ladish, me, Lisa Trenton, it's Brown. And I'm going to talk about breaking points and why they are necessary for us. Um, the more stubborn we are, the more we have to have a breaking point. But this goes beyond being stubborn. Um, our body, our physical body holds a consciousness of its own. Our, our human aspect will have resistance inside. There are protection mechanisms that put up a guard and push back and create resistance that we're not aware of unless we're present and paying attention. Now, when flow stops, when you feel yourself struggling, when easy stops, then something's out of alignment inside of you and in your physical world. Um, this means that you're supposed to look at things. You're supposed to observe, let go of the judgment and just see and realize what's going on. What am I supposed to see? What's going on inside of me? What am I allowing? Where am I compromising? You start asking these words. Where am I ha not happy? And start figuring out what's going on with you and what you're allowing to occur. Um, there is no, they're taking advantage of me. That doesn't happen anymore. That's an old consciousness. Um, Forgiveness is another one. If you're stuck in the duality of they did this to me and I need to forgive, then it's a lot, it takes a lot longer uh, to, to do. Uh, if you just realize it was a contract that you had with them and they were doing you a favor in order to show you something that you couldn't get to inside of you in order to trigger an old um, vibration of lack, something, lack of love, um, compromise, lack of integrity, lack of honor to yourself. Um, it all mm, is created from a vibrational frequency from inside of you. And so everything is occurs to show you what's going on, uh, what you couldn't see before, um, help you basically see your subconscious, uh, see your mm, old programs. Uh, that you didn't know were there before. All right, so I want to go back to the breaking point because this is going to be a big one. We need breaking points because the energy around something is too strong. Unless we are present and observing and we feel it or see it ourselves and go, wow, I didn't know that was there. Wow, I got a lot of resistance. Wow, I'm blaming somebody. Wow, I'm all caught up in drama. Wow, I got a lot of story about that. Whatever. Now, the, the more we hold on to an old mentality, old belief, the things that we wrap our, our, ourselves around, our identities, the things we think are important to us that really aren't, those things we define ourselves by, that all of that's got to go. Um, nothing defines us other than who we are, which is pure love, pure light. Awesome. We're awesome. We're magnificent. We're all kinds of things, and it has nothing to do with lack. But when we want things our way, when we don't want to open up and listen to something different, which is of a higher consciousness, a vibration, of frequency. Um, when we don't want to let go of something out of fear or safety, then the more we hold on, the more we have to have a breaking point for that energy to be broken. Um, for me, all along the way, I started noticing, observing myself, and I would pay attention to what it was that motivated me. And back in the old days, it was fear. When I ran out of money, that's what motivated me to get busy. When I lost something, that's when I got it. Oh my goodness, I lost something. That was really important. And I would get busy, um, working really hard. 
And the more human we are, the harder we have to physically work. I'm going to say that really quick and then I'll talk about it later. The more we are a higher self aspect, the less hard it is. It's all just energetic. Um, other than the actual physical we work that we do in service, like with the work that I do, all the computer work, all the programs, all the writing of the courses, that's work. Um, but we love it, so it's not work, but it is because I don't do it for me. I do it for all of those other people out there that it helps. Um, and so technically, everything we do is for somebody else. We couldn't care less. And um, we've mastered that within ourselves. Uh, we take the things we've experienced and we turn them around and we turn them into mastery tools so other people um, can embrace these higher light frequencies within themselves and come to expand beyond those old limits and dimensions and live in those other dimensions again. This, I live in these other dimensions. Every moment of every day. I don't contract back down again. When you contract back down, you fall beneath the veils. When you expand, you expand beyond the veils. And a lot of people, they'll expand beyond the veils, see the beauty, see the magnificence, enjoy it. It's beautiful. That's awesome. I would love this every day. And then boom, they'll go to sleep and they'll wake up the next morning and they're back in human realities again with all the things that they don't want with all the things they don't enjoy right there in their face um this is for a purpose because when you expand beyond the veils you're being shown what your realities can be like if you'll stop fighting um opening your heart if you'll stop fighting um by trying to need it your way if you'll stop fighting uh consciousness basically, um, then you can have those amazing things. Breaking points. A lot of us, the more stubborn we are, the more masculine, human masculine energy, because there's a divine masculine and a human masculine. I'm talking about human masculine, the stubbornness inside of us. Now, stubbornness is awesome if we use it. And you get to a point when your um, divine masculine activates that you actually use the stubbornness against your human self, which means that as a higher self aspect, you pull your divine masculine out. And I have some words for this that probably aren't very ladylike or um, eloquent, but basically you grab them and, and you say, nope, not anymore. Not my reality. I'm not listening to you. And you bring your power out and you stop listening to the words that your head says to the beliefs, to the programs that used to tell you you were less. You have to find your power inside to stop listening to that. Um, and it is a part of the process. Um, if you sit around waiting for the thought to go on its own, it doesn't happen that way. This is part of mastery. You're the one that has to transform everything into light. You're the one that has to reprogram yourself. You're the one that has to remind yourself 24 hours a day not to go back into that old mentality anymore. It's all up to you. Every bit of this is. What I used to do was when I would feel an energy well up in me, I would realize it was something I needed to let go of. And I would honor the process and I would just pull away and I'd go off for myself. And if I needed to cry, I cried. Um, if I needed to be a victim for a few minutes, I let myself be a victim consciously in order to get the energy out to honor and validate myself for whatever it was, and then I would just move on. I put a time limit on things. Okay, I got two hours to get through this, and then I'm going back to work. I didn't let my human me drag on forever, which is what a lot of people will do. Um, when their human aspect gains control, and their head kicks in, and I had this conversation with somebody last night. They're like, my head has just been really dominant, and I'm like, what are you doing about it? Open your heart, close your eyes, expand, bring yourself back into this. Is a, this is about mastering yourself and your aspects and saying, you know what? I don't have to be stuck in my head anymore. The moment you become conscious, you don't have to stay in your head. The difference is if you're sitting there listening to your head, you're not conscious. If you're believing it, now you do listen to it and observe and go, wow, <laughs> I don't believe that anymore. 
but it's really important to understand that mastery stepping into your mastery embodying yourself as a master being is embracing your light opening your heart and not letting your head run the show if if it takes going and stomping some energy out and getting it out of your cellular memory do it if it takes pulling away by yourself and going and, and just crying and letting your body cleanse. Do it. It won't last forever. It's not going to kill you to release an emotion. Hanging on to it might. It might cause your body to go haywire. And you don't want that. You want your body to tune in light. You want to be pristine. You want to feel the magnificence. You want your heart open so you can experience those awesome, magnificent realities and that, and that love again. The love that we are is beyond anything. This makes me cry. The love that we are is beyond anything that we ever could have imagined before. And when you start connecting with yourself, inside again that love is profound and it defines your entire being and that's who you are every one of us is what we forgot and each time there's more love and each time it's more beautiful and when you didn't think that you could hold or be any more love, <laughs> there's more. But you gotta stop fighting. You gotta stop listening to the old stories and trying to tell yourself that you're less. You gotta want something more. I've had many conversations lately with others who have resigned themselves to live in lack. I'm like, why would you do that? Why? You don't want any more for yourself. The days of old consciousness, old earth consciousness are gone. You don't have to live in lack anymore. But you do have to desire more and you have to make a commitment to yourself and you got to do whatever it takes i get up every day i do what it takes every day i do what it takes to be in service i do what it takes to get things done i do what it takes i stand in my power and responsibility for absolutely everything i don't have anybody looking out for me but yet i do i have an entire universe and when your memories come back, you become the entire universe again. You have all of your higher self aspects, which are you. You're never, ever alone again. You're so connected to absolutely everything. That you understand everything again. It's very simple. It's very pure. And you have no desire to live the old ways anymore. You can't. You don't hold it within you. You can't. And this is where we have to put our foot down and say, no, not my world. Not my world. My world's unity. My world's love. My world's making a difference. My world's supporting others who are doing this too. There are a lot of people still playing the old games and twisting it and making it look like it's like that all works itself on its own but we can't be a part of that um we have to hold the higher states of consciousness in place at all times we are the grid work um, of new earth we are the the crystal grid keepers the crystalline grid keepers and for new earth we hold it inside of us and we connect up to each other through our grid work through our light, through the knowledge that we hold, 
through our energy signatures, through our um, galactic codes. All of these things um, is how we um, connect up and work together in all the other dimensions in the waking and the sleep state again. So, I don't even know what I started talking about. But you know what? That's the way she flows. So, I love you. From my soul to yours. Thank you for your dedication. Thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you for making a difference. Thank you to everybody that I work with in, in sessions and all the live calls and come to listen to all the media events. Thank you to all the people that recommend to me and, and send me opportunities to reach others. It does make a difference. All of those that send in your testimonials, that's what means something to me, um, is the work that we do, the difference that we make. The light we hold. I love you. I'll see you soon. Mahalo.